Today's video is all about finding the best case lube for sizing cases. Today we're going to be adding three different case lubes, Redding Imperial Sizing Wax, Hornady One Shot, as well as Dillon Case Lube. Talk a little bit about how they differ and see if one of these products changes the way we need to process brass. For today's test, we're also going to run a performance comparison in 6.5 Creedmoor to see if our standard deviations and average velocities are affected by our process. When you ask somebody what case lube is best, more than likely you're going to get the answer of whatever they're using, for obvious reasons. You'd want to use whatever works best for your process, and for years I've primarily relied on Redding's resizing wax. However, with our new Dillon 750, I'm really looking for something that could speed up my reloading process. And being able to lube cases in bulk is now becoming more appealing. But today I want to make sure that any changes I might make to my process don't affect the performance of my reloads. I don't think it's just me, but when anybody makes a change to their process, I think it's very important we prove it out. If you see a change down range, you need to know where it came from. If you start doing things in different orders or adding or removing steps, we need to understand what performance difference that might have on our reloads. So we're going to put our standard sizing process against four other methods to see if there's any difference in performance and if there's any reason to change or not to change the way we process brass. Typically my brass processing involves decapping my brass setting it through a wet tumbler, drying it off in a case dryer, annealing it, lubricating it with imperial sizing wax, full length sizing, removing the case sizing wax, opening up the neck with an expander mandrel that's been lubricated with dry neck lube, then trim to length chamfer and debird all in the same step. After we've trimmed, chamfered, and debird those cases, we're going to run a Q-tip to remove any chips that we can, as well as remove any case lube that might remain in there, and then run a case neck brush through at least two times to make sure the neck is ready to go to accept a projectile. The second configuration we're going to test today is essentially that same process, except after our final brush cleaning, we're going to go back and add again some dry neck lube before we see our projectile to see if that changes our performance in any way. The next option we're going to test is the Hornady One Shot, and because I'm not sure how reliably we're going to be able to remove any of the Hornady One Shot from the next, we're simply going to be using our standard process, trimming to length, chamfering to burring, and then just removing the chips with a brush. No separate Q-tip step to try and remove any of the One Shot, because I don't know how effective that will be. And then the next step is going to be the same thing, except with Dillon Case Lube. The Dillon Case Lube is an lanolin-based formula. I'm not sure what the effect of leaving that in our necks is going to be. And so we're going to test two configurations with it. One, just brushing it out like we normally did, same with the one shot, as well as another step where we use a Q-tip to remove the Dillon case lube and then brush them as well. I'm sure I added some text to the screen to help it make sense, but those are the five different configurations that we're going to use to test today. Now, as far as the contents of any one of these products go on, I'm sure you can go on the internet and do research to find out exactly what it contains. I'm not really going to speculate here. I will say that the Dillon case lube right on the package says environmentally safe non-aerosol cartridge bait case lube spray. They make no point to hide. Right on the back, it says the contents are lanolin and alcohol. So not really a big secret what is in the Dillon case lube. And if you look, there's plenty of people talking about how to make your own, own homemade Dillon case lube. We might try that eventually on the channel, but I thought I'd try a bottle to find out exactly how it performed. To me, the primary function of case lube is just not to get your cases stuck in your dyes. As long as it goes in and out smoothly and it doesn't affect the performance, it doesn't really matter how it happens. But to put some numbers behind exactly what we're doing today, I thought I want to see if the velocity changes significantly or if one of these products modifying my process slightly, if it affected the performance of my reloads. So for today's test, we're using our good old H4350 by Hodgkin, the 140 grain ELDM by Hornady, Peterson Small Rifle Primer Brass, and the good old Federal 205 Match AR. One thing that might seem odd is I'm really not concerned about groups in this particular case. For today's test, these are the 140 grain ELDs, but they're factory seconds that I picked up from midway on a sale. Accuracy is really not ultimately what I'm trying to measure here. Mostly, it's the standard deviation of performance, though I will show you guys the group information if you're interested. And because of the way the numbers worked out and the test data, we're only going to have 47 data points today. Unfortunately, I fired two of these cases on another day, so I'm removing that information from the data set because it was slightly different weather conditions. Though, to be perfectly honest, adding them doesn't significantly change the data. With 41.3 grains of H4350, we loaded our rounds. Cartridge overall length was 2.820 inches. All the other data will be on your screen as well. And so we started today's test. For our standard process, using our Imperial Sizing Dye Wax on 10 samples, our average velocity was 2790 feet per second. Our standard deviation was 5.7 and our extreme spread was 19. 
The group size over 10 rounds was 0.94 MOA. With that identical process except adding dry neck lube prior to seating the projectile, on the 9 samples I loaded, our average velocity was 2799 feet per second, our standard deviation was an identical 5.7, and our extreme spread was 17 feet per second. And that 9 shot group yielded a 0.91 MOA group. With our Hornady 1 shot, over 10 samples, our average velocity was 2804 feet per second, our standard deviation was 5.4, and an extreme spread was 15. And the 8 shot group size was 0.81 MOA, and the 9 shot, if you include the pull, which I absolutely consider to be a pull, was 1.25 MOA. So, moving on to our Dillon case lube, over 10 samples, our average velocity was 2802 feet per second, our standard deviation was 5.7, essentially identical to what our Imperial Sizing Wax process was, extreme spread was 18 feet per second. However, the group size on 9 rounds for that was 0.51 MOA. For our last group of samples, the Dillon case lube, adding the Q-tip to try and remove the case lube from the neck of the case, over 8 samples, our average velocity was 2800 feet per second, our standard deviation dropped to 4.4, and our extreme spread was only 12 feet per second. However, our 8-shot group was 0.59 MOA. I don't want you to think conclusively that the case lube that we're using has anything necessarily to do with the group size. Which case lube is best? I'll leave that for you guys to decide. Overall, as far as the statistics were concerned, I don't really think there's a significant difference. But I guess it leaves some of you guys something to argue about in the comments section below. But certainly something that I do think matters is case neck tension. So if you haven't seen my series yet on case neck tension, I suggest you check that out. It's going to show you the differences that changing your case neck tension is going to have on the performance of your reloads, both in group size and velocity. If you haven't seen that series yet, I do think there's a lot of interesting information in there. But whatever case loop you choose, I hope to see you come back next week. And until then, stay safe in small groups.